right, welcome back, everybody. The global markets are monitoring the debt crisis in Greece, but should we also be just as worried about the United States ballooning deficit? Joining us right now is R. C. Taraman. He is the CEO of Doha Bank. And, sir, thank you very much for joining us here. We appreciate it. We are not dressed properly. We're That's not. That's all I have today. to. I apologize in good. advance. You show, you. Up well, you show up very well prepared for these things, so we appreciate it. You just you. came from an overnight party, so <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> Life is a celebration. You always wear a bow tie and a come you see? Yeah. Ah, perfect. We get it. You know, we've been talking an awful lot about Greece and trying to figure out what this means around the world, but if something like this could happen here in the United States too, what, what's the betting from outside the United States? Could that happen? Well, you have to realize, throughout the crisis, the dollar was getting strengthened. Then, macroeconomic fundamentals defied the logic, and dollar was weakening. This crisis is an opportunity for the United States. It's a $13 trillion economy. Let's not underestimate. You have very strong fundamentals. You have diversified revenue streams. You've got a stable and functional democracy the strongest democracy. Constitution-wise, it's well set. That's your strength. What we are seeing as a subprime, or I saw a poster today morning in Times Square, don't drive the debt to defeat a great nation. Oh, what a slogan it is. Conceptually, we can never underestimate the strength of the United States. It's a convergence of, of financial economy getting into real economy. This guy's more optimistic about America than a lot of Americans were. I have to say. That's true. I mean, that's pretty amazing. The reality reminds, you have to convert. The global governance has failed. That's what the problem is all about. The toxic assets, transcended borders, infected Europe, infected the real economies, even emerging economies, and that's the reality. The world has to change, and they have to come to terms to global governance. We have to unify the process. We have to come to terms in terms of uh, regulatory realignment. We have to come to terms in terms of think, hedge funds. Do you we think have that's realistic? I it mean, is. I mean, it's very hard, frankly, in this country to get any states, frankly, to agree on anything. The idea of global governance in a meaningful, in a meaningful way, I, I, I'm all for it. I'm not su suggesting it's not a great idea. I just wonder about the realism of it. We have to necessarily realize global governance is not an option. It's ethical. It is conceptual, and we have to empower the nations can out I of politics. Can back on you on that a little bit? Yeah. Because it strikes me that we had global governance during the crisis, during the bubble. Basel. Basel. They, not only Basel, but every central bank and every regulatory regime came to the same conclusion. There was no bubble. These derivatives were a good thing. And we had unity. We just had unity around the wrong policies. This is a defined corporate crime. It was designed to defeat the common man. It's not a financial crisis. It's a human crisis. We have to achieve the Millennium Goals, empower the United Nations, you know, come together, converge politics and economics. Today, that's the need of the hour. Bipartisan basis, you have to discuss the issues. Continents and countries have to come together. It's not integrated monetary policy or fiscal policy. You have to necessarily come out of t the, the petty politics and, and look at the bigger picture. It's a human crisis. But you, you just said something very interesting. This was to defeat the common man. I mean, this, that's, a, that's an interesting statement when you think about Wall Street versus Main Street, th that this was built to defeat the common man. You, you believe that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Consciously, the rating agencies have failed. They certified triple AAA guilt certificates. Uh, auditors have failed. Accounting models have failed. Valuations have failed. Regulators have failed. So what are we talking about? Who can fix this? The globe has to come to terms. Yeah, but hold on, because what you want to, what, what I want to know is, in whose hands should I put my welfare? Yep. You're telling me to put my hands right back into the, the hands of those guys whose models failed, whose earnings models, everything failed, their regulation failed. It strikes me that we have to do a little more rethinking than perhaps you're suggesting, rather than going back to what we had before. Absolutely. Communism has changed. Capitalism has to redefine its form and substance. Mixed economy, again, it's insulated, but it's not isolated from the global crisis. So the world is going through true transformation. There is a leadership required from the United Nations, and you have to necessarily include the world at large at one piece and then start setting universal standard, universal framework to see we pull this crisis. The world has not recovered. We sent, politicians have sent multiple messages to massage the, the sentiments. It has not recovered. It's stimulus. It is stimulus and quantitative easing which, uh, you know, sends some positive signals. That doesn't mean the patient is out of the ICU. He was administered pill. The minute you pull out the, 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 uh, the uh, quantitative easing, you ha you're going to have serious problem in the world. So let's, let's take the world is not going to recover for the next two to three years. It is not a pessimistic approach. The fact remains we have to analyze in hardcore terms. Hmm. Mr. Sitaranam, we would love to continue this conversation. We'd love to have you back next time you're in town. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Boy, that was interesting.